Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Tuesday, the 2nd of April. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by uh, Johnny McFarlane. How are we doing, Johnny? Good, Derek. It's great to be back on the show. It's been a while. I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully loads and loads of comments slagging me off so I can <laughs> feel like I'm back at home. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we don't need to worry about that. Before we dive into all things <laughs> Rangers, folks, just a, a quick word for our podcast sponsors. You know the drill by now. Uh, MPH Boilers, if your boiler is on its last legs, these are the guys to call. They've got some fantastic uh, Weissman Boilers uh, on offer at this moment in time. They've got uh, a free, uh, unbeatable deal where you get a free internet controller with every boiler, uh, making it effortlessly to control your heating. And they're also throwing in the first year service for free as well. Absolutely sensational deal the all important links are in the description below please do go and check them out if that is something that you are requiring um right let's talk uh, rangers johnny uh good result at the weekend sets it up nicely for sunday of course the build-up has uh, well and truly started a huge game i think it's at the biggest old firm game i was trying to rack my brains when was the last time we've had such a, a, a momentous game uh, on the horizon it's uh, a long time coming um but oh. it's huge uh, what's that Probably 2021, the match that Aaron Ramsey scored after yeah. three minutes. Uh, I think that was also in April. Um, unfortunately, that one didn't go Rangers' way um, from 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 a point of view of, of Rangers. Um, and this one is is exactly the same. It's absolutely huge. Before that, Derek, you're going you're going way back, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's no doubt about it. It's uh, a colossal game approaching on Sunday. Uh, lots to talk about uh, off the back of that win over Hibs. Uh, Johnny, myself, Adam and Joshua touched on some of the big talking points from it. There's a great uh, article on the website this morning. Folks, I'd urge you to check it out. Joshua's examined the goals that Rangers are conceding, the goal against Hibs, uh, and uh, looking to assess as a defensive weakness Rangers have at this moment in time. Uh, and could it be addressed before Celtic come to Ibrox uh, on Sunday? Uh, the goals that they are losing, Johnny, they look to be pretty cheap uh, from the looks of things. They're going to have to sharpen up when Celtic come calling. They're a better side than Hibs, uh, of course. Uh, the back line has to be on top of their game on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, he's... So, sorry, Derek, I, you, you broke up there. What, what were you saying? Yeah, we're talking about the goals that Rangers are conceding at this moment in time. We touched on yeah. it briefly yesterday. Josh has wrote, wrote a great piece on the website about it, examining the sort of goals that, that Rangers seem to be giving up at this moment in time, uh, and they need to sharpen up defensively when Celtic yeah. come calling. Yeah, absolutely. Celtic have obviously got a serious threat. We know from previous articles Josh has written that the impact that Kyogo in particular has had on this fixture. I think it's something like, correct me if I'm wrong, it's close to 7-7 seven and seven for, for the Japanese striker. So clearly someone that you have to keep a very, very, very close eye on. He'll be playing on the shoulder and is capable of producing a moment of absolute magic. We know that. Um, that's going to be a test for Rangers. It's going to be a test particularly for Conor Goldson because he's been torched a few times by Kyogo. Yeah. Listen... He's not playing as well this season. I don't think there's any doubt that, that Kyogo under Brendan Rodgers is not the force that, that he was under Ange Postacoglu. I think you could probably say that for the entire Celtic team, to be fair. Um, but if you're losing goals the way Rangers are and uh, you're, you're losing mad moments when you're in complete control, there's clearly a concern that that's going to come back to bite you in a game where it's going to be more 50-50. Um, I think if... If Rangers can keep Kyogo quiet, if they can stop that that habit that he has of drifting in, I, I think they've got a chance. You've got to remember that one of the other players that's, that's caused Rangers so many problems over the years, Abada's away. You know, if you think about how many times he caught out Barisic at that yep. back post, um, he's not there. I don't think Celtic are as, are as strong in wide areas as they have been in the past because you had a bad on one side and Jota on the other. Now, I think Kuhn is coming on to a game, um, but he's not uh, yet going to be spoken about as uh, a player that can that can reach those levels. So it's, it's a good opportunity. And, and, and listen, Derek, make no mistake, Rangers absolutely have to win this game. Um, yeah. a, a draw keeps the title, keeps the title alive. But, wow, wouldn't that be squeaky bum time going to Parkhead having to get something? Rangers win, 
at Ibrox, they know they can go to Parkhead and lose, and the pressure massively piles up on Celtic because yep. psychologically it's just a totally different kettle of fish. Yeah. It certainly is. Uh, lots of interesting comments that are coming in just now. This one, uh, I'll tie in with uh, Philip Clement's comments on Kamar Roof. Uh, Wick Warrior gets in touch. He says, Sunday can't come soon enough. Well, the players just back from injury get the nod to start. Of course, we've seen uh, some uh, return. Abdallah Sima came off the bench, as did uh, Dujon Sterling at the weekend. And uh, Kimar Roof wasn't in the match day squad, but the manager has been speaking about him. He says uh, he's getting better and better, but of course he comes from a long way back. And there's competition. There are also other players. So it's about <laughs> giving him his best, which he has been doing in training and raising his levels. He comes from far away because he hasn't played too many minutes this season. Physically, uh, he is ready to play 90 minutes, yes, but there's also competition from other players. That way, it's a positive thing. I start to get headaches again about making decisions, but it's only a positive thing for the club, I think. I saw him when he was at Anderlecht. He's always been a natural goal scorer. He's someone who's really hungry to score goals and who is really active in the box and who worked hard for the team also. It was the same way there in Belgium. Uh, and he said uh, on playing him uh, perhaps uh, next week, he says, now I want only to get these possibilities, but to have those possibilities for 90 minutes. That's the next step to take with these guys coming back. At the moment, it's just watching and thinking, okay, this guy can play 20, this one can play 30, this one can play 45, and then make a good mix to win games. So you want to come to a situation where you have positive choices with uh, guys who can play 90 minutes, then it's a real challenge for the players also to be in the next exam. Um, so there you go. That's uh, Paul Kamont speaking about Kamar Roof and the injured players at this moment in time. Great to see Abdallah Sima uh, and Dujon back in the, the team at the weekend, Johnny. Uh, it was a bit of a surprise, I've got to admit, not to see Kamar Roof in the match day squad. I was uh, slightly concerned that he'd picked up another knock, but it wasn't that at all. Um, would you be inclined? Uh, I, I think it's unlikely he starts next week, but would you have him in the squad? Well, obviously, you'd have to look at him in training and see what he's like. So it's difficult to kind of make that decision where you're putting yourself in Philip Clement's shoes without having that information. What I would say is, Derek, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that Kemar Roof, fully fit, is a better player by a country mile than Cyril Dessers. I'm not convinced by Dessers. I, I didn't think he was particularly good at the weekend. He scored his goal with a, a lovely, well-timed run, a uh, nice header as well. But outside of that, I wasn't impressed by his performance. I rarely am. I'm just not going to get on the Cyril Dessers train, uh, unfortunately. Um, I, I, I just don't think he's of the required standard to be a Rangers number nine. Um, but in terms of Kemar Roof, we absolutely know that he is. We absolutely know what he's capable of. He's got the quality and the um, ability to really, really shine in that role. Let's be honest. I've said it before. If Kemar Roof's fully fit and firing, he's not at Rangers because yeah. he, you know he's just he's too good a player. He'd be in the Premier League, so that's why he's here. Um, but listen, Derek, as the commenters are saying, you know it's such a huge gamble. He, he's hardly played. Come on, they're saying that he can play ninety minutes. That he's back. In terms of fitness, but will he break down again? And then you have to put Dessers on. Um, so, uh, listen, I, I, I think based on 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 the situation as it stands, there's a big there's a big question mark for Philip Clement. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people saying they they felt that uh, Dessers did have a good game on on Saturday. I I, I just feel like Rangers don't function that well with Dessers as the number no. nine. He works hard, but for me, he just it's just it's just a no. And listen, I know that's people disagree with that, but I've watched tons and tons and tons of serial Dessers and I just think he's too inconsistent. For me, it's the kind of manager the kind of player that gets a manager of the sack. You never know what you're going to get from him. I think before he signed, there was a quote from Ronald De Boer and he said Dessers is a guy who can give you a 10, but he's also a guy who'll give you a 2. Yeah, yeah. And and his performances all, all vary wildly between between the two, and, and that's exactly what I've seen. Uh, I don't think I've seen 10 too often for Rangers. 
Um, but I've mm. seen two or three times. Obviously, he was a way better than that on, on, on Saturday. But I think if Danilo gets himself back in a really, really good shape, he could have a, an important say on the title. The obvious one, Derek, ahead of the strikers, away from the strikers, is Sima. Because his goal record is so good, especially off the wing. And uh, if you can get him back fit for the game, I think he has to start. I, I'm always going to be tempted to, to, to put in Roof ahead of uh, Dessers, Derek, because mm -hmm. how I feel about Dessers as a player. Um, but even I admit that that would be an enormous gamble at this stage because he's just not proven his fitness. So, so I don't think uh, I don't think you can you can really justifiably make that argument. Yeah. Uh, listen, Joshua put a stat out over the weekend. Uh, he got a bit of heat in the traction that Dessers has scored 12 goals uh, in his last 14 starts for uh, Philip Clement, which is pretty uh, a pretty good record, you've got to say. But it's these big games, uh, we all know his high-profile miss at Parkhead at the turn of the year. We cannot afford that come Sunday. It has to be clinical. Uh, I've said it before, Johnny. I'm concerned uh, with Bedessa's up top. Listen, he took his goal well at the weekend, um, but he can't afford uh, three, four big opportunities to pass him by. He has to be a killer in that penalty area uh, and take opportunities because uh, Rangers won't get as many as he did uh, against uh, recent clubs. Uh, of that, there is no doubt. So, uh, yep, uh, I think Dessas will get the nod, but he certainly has to be on top of his game. Uh, you mentioned there Seema. Stephen made an interesting point. He says, uh, does Seema go on the right for anyone? For me, Silva, Dessers and Seema are the front three. Uh, as I touched on earlier, good to see him back. Uh, whether he plays over on the right, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I think uh, the manager's got a bit of a selection dilemma, Johnny. On the left-hand side, of course, Rabi Matondo scored a screamer at the weekend. Uh, I think mm. he's in uh, with a shout of uh, potentially starting the game. Fabio Silva, then it's a big decision. Where does he go? Does he, uh, he move out to the right-hand side? We haven't really seen that that much, really, to be honest. Um, but over on that left, I think the manager's got a decision to make. On the right, um, I'm thinking there's a few comments coming in. <coughs> talking about Dujon Sterling, David Morrison with the point. Uh, it says, uh, well, uh, Rangers play Sterling on Sunday. It's a must for me. I think uh, they should be playing Dujon Sterling on Sunday, but it's just a case of where. Yeah, well, I think there's a case for Dujon Sterling playing left back, to be honest. Um, if Red Van doesn't make it, Johnny, I'd play Dujon yeah. ahead of ahead of Bonner. I, I think throwing Red Van in after a period out like that is a bit of a gamble. Now, mm -hmm. He's 22, so you've got to imagine that he's going to be able to bounce back very quickly from injury. He's not had a career history of, of, of bad injuries or anything like that, although he's had a few for Rangers, it must be said. So you'd imagine that he can get himself going pretty quickly, but I, I think Sterling is an obvious option there. He has to play for me. He, he just gives you so much. Would you put him in defensive midfield? I, I certainly think Diamandi and Lundstrom have looked the part together. It's a nice blend there, so I don't think uh, Clement will want to break that up. <coughs> so I think Sterling's best opportunity is, is probably left back. Mm. Um, but there's so many options now for Philip Clement, and that's, yeah. I think, underlines and highlights what a good job he has done to get Rangers to this stage, Derek. Because absolutely no one would have imagined that we'd be talking about an April old firm where Rangers are going in effectively ahead in the league, provided they win a game in hand. Yeah. Um, with that in mind, you've got to say he's been outstanding and what he's put together with what he had available is remarkable. And now you're starting to see Rangers get players back, Danilo's coming back, Seamus coming back, and you will start to see these selection headaches because... Actually, the, the squad is pretty good if everyone's fit. It's pretty robust. It's it's pretty deep. The problem has just always been that Rangers have had horrendous injuries and horrendous problems with getting people consistently fit over a period of time. And that's been going back a number of years, Derek, as we know. Um, but I think, you know, there was a lot of chat about Ross Wilson's uh, last summer transfer window when he, when he brought in players like Ridvan and, and Tom Lawrence. And, and there was a lot of criticism because those guys just didn't play. But now that they're actually playing, you can mm. see that they are quality players. You can see what they can give to Rangers. But the big problem has been getting them on, on the pitch. Um, you know, 
I don't think anyone would deny that Tom Lawrence is a is a fine player. Yeah, and and he's added a lot for me. He's, you know, if you've got Cantwell playing in that number ten, and you can bring him off after an hour because he's tiring because he's given one hundred and ten percent, put on Tom Lawrence, you know, towards the end of the game, or vice versa. I think you've got a really really good pair there that can that can make those positions a really really strong part of that Rangers team. I was going to say that is it one or the other, Johnny, with regards to that. We've discussed this before, at, at Lawrence or Cantwell, and uh, I think I'd be. I know Cantwell will start <coughs> the weekend. Uh, he's just getting back up to hundred uh, percent match sharpness. Of course, uh, he can be a potential game changer. I've got to admit, I was uh, hugely disappointed in his performance at Parkhead last time out. Uh, I'd be tempted to start Tom Lawrence in this game. I think he's been uh, playing really well at this moment in time. Uh, perhaps bringing Cantwell on. But again, it's like you say, that selection dilemma. That's, that's why Philip Clement's paid the, the big bucks to make these decisions. Well, I don't think Tom Lawrence is capable of that that cross that, that, that Cantwell put in for uh, Desert. That was an incredible mm. cross, um, pass stroke cross. Um, I think Cantwell's probably got a higher ceiling than Tom Lawrence, but I would say Lawrence may be more effective. Yeah. If you were to play both of them in the same team for 50 games, I'd fancy Tom Lawrence to get more goals. But I also think Tom Lawrence shouldn't be discounted as a winger, Derek. I know that he's older, he's had injuries. Is he as quick as he once was? Yep. Oh, Johnny's just uh, frozen on us there. That's a, a quality <laughs> image for you guys watching us uh, on the, the live at this moment in time. Hopefully we'll get uh, Johnny back. There he's back. He's Hello. back again. Sorry. There we go. He's put 50 pence in the meter. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was saying that um, uh, Tom Lawrence is capable of playing on either flank. Yeah. And I think that that's something that, that should be considered because he could easily be slotted in there and I think Tom Lawrence has got that he's got that defensive mouse about him as well I think he likes a battle he likes a tackle he likes to get stuck in and I think he's someone you could probably trust playing in a slightly more defensive role if you were just wanting to adapt something slightly in terms of formation so you know really really good uh, player and, and I think added a lot and an example of why when Rangers start to clear up their injuries they, they really really do look quite good yeah, uh, just on my uh, suggestion that uh, Tom Lawrence uh, gets a nod ahead of Cantwell, Rob uh, is not agreeing. He says, dropping Todd, are you drunk, Derek? Not at uh, 9.47 on a ah. Tuesday morning, Rob. It's not time for... Uh, although it is five o'clock somewhere, as the old saying goes. <laughs> uh, Mark, it was an interesting point as well. This this was a, a surprising... I've got to say I was surprised with it, the starting 11 at the weekend. Chris got it back up, bang on for the first time, I think, ever since Clement has taken charge. But uh, Mark says, uh, asking for a friend, uh, would it be wrong to play Right, thought he was uh, decent on so on so uh, Saturday against uh, Hibs. Uh, Johnny, uh, the manager. I think every Rangers manager that's come in has uh, has, has played Scott Wright in high profile games. He's uh, one of those guys that just uh, does the job that is asked of him. We all know his uh, his limitations. Uh, the final ball often lets him down. But uh, could you see him starting the game on, on Sunday? Perhaps started on on Saturday. It could be in me a shout on the right hand side. I don't think it's impossible, Derek, but there's, there's, there's too many options, I think, um, mm. for, for Scott Wright to play there. Um, I, I, I just suspect that he'll go for something else, Clement, um, with the players that are coming back. But obviously, much of it will depend on what he sees in training. Yeah. <coughs> Scott Wright, as you say, he, he, he's not going to be a Rangers superstar, is he? No. Um, but he's a player that can be trusted to go and do a job. Uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst particularly liked him, I think, because he was uh, pretty tactically smart and he would do, he would follow instructions to the letter. And and that, that's a good thing to have in the squad. And Scott Wright is a good example of, I think, an area where Rangers have, have struggled in the last five years, which is picking up good players from the Premiership that can do a job for you. Yeah. And there's no doubt... Listen, there'll be people in the comments who say Scott Wright is hopeless or whatever, right? But Scott Wright has done a good job for Rangers. He's been a good signing at 250k. And there should have been more of these type of players brought in. And and a few of those players that could have been picked up by Rangers and Scotland have gone on to have really, really good careers elsewhere. And I think Scott Wright is an example of someone 
He's got a bit about him. He's got pace. He's got a bit of trickery. When he's in full flow, Derek, he's absolutely lovely. The problem is with Scott Wright is it's his final, it's his final touch. Either the final pass or the final shot just isn't quite there. But when he's gliding through the middle of a pitch, um, he's he's lovely to to look at. So mm. uh, I think I think he's done he's done pretty well overall for Rangers. And nobody will forget the fact that he, he scored that wonderful goal against Hearts to cap off the, the Scottish Cup final win after what was a, a grueling season. And, yeah. and that was a great moment. And if if that's the the punch the punch line or the or the the, the, the footnote to your Rangers career, then uh, I don't know. I'm mixing my metaphors there. I'm not. If that's the the thing he looks back on, then I don't think that's a bad memory for 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 him or the Rangers fans to to yeah. recall because that was a, a fine moment. Well, we'll be back at hand in, uh, in a few weeks and I'm sure we'll be coming alive again uh, in that Scottish Cup uh, semi-final. So, uh, yeah, games to look forward to. Uh, and uh, come, some points that are coming in, some interest one that, that caught my eye. Uh, first of all, William, uh, with this point, any idea when Danilo will be back in the squad? No, uh, we do. We have seen his updates. He was He's very active on, on social media uh, about his uh, rehab and getting back up to speed. He's not training with the team yet, as far as I'm aware. So uh, he's just going through his uh, individual uh, training programme. If uh, we can see him at some point uh, between now and the end of the season, then absolutely fantastic stuff. Again, it just adds uh, to those uh, attacking options and Rangers have... Uh, uh, had a threadbare forward line for much of this season. So, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully he gets back in. But then again, and this is one thing, getting back uh, fit again, but it's getting that those uh, mat, that match sharpness back as well. So um, hopefully we can see him play some part between now and uh, the end of uh, the season. Uh, just on the game on Sunday as well, uh, Colin Cameron with a point. He says, uh, morning, lads. On Sunday, we need to boss the midfield and rattle their centre-backs. If we do that, we can win decisively. Thoughts? Absolutely. I think uh, that's uh, Celtic's backline for me, Johnny, is uh, gettable. Uh, that's what really annoyed me in the first game at Ibrooks. Rangers uh, sitting off uh, and uh, playing like the away side. I thought Celtic were there for the taking um, and uh, it, it never materialised that way. On Sunday, I want to see a, a, a full-blown going out. Uh, I mean, a disciplined performance, uh, right enough, but I want to see Rangers take the game to Celtic. Absolutely. Absolutely spot on. I couldn't say it better. There's the danger when you've got a foreign manager and a lot of foreign players that they don't quite get the the time honoured and tested way to win an old firm game. And you need to win the battle. You yep. just do. It's always going to be frenetic. It's always going to be aggressive. Your opponent's always going to be up for it 110%. And you need to be up for it 111%. That's the first thing the first non-negotiable negotiable of an old firm game. And Lundstrom and Diamandi against whoever's playing for Celtic, presumably Hatati McGregor, will, mm. I'd be surprised if McGregor didn't make it, for example. Yeah, That's going to be where the game is won and lost, I think, in a lot of ways. As Colin says, Celtic centre-backs are not exactly... The best part of their team are they? I mean, think you look at Liam Scales, um, Carter Vickers is obviously a very good player, and you have to hold your hands yeah. up to that and say, you know, he's an outstanding centre back and he's been a brilliant signing. Um, but I don't think they have the same quality since Starfelt has left. Starfelt, I thought, was all also a weak link in terms of um, not particularly fast, not particularly strong, but he was really, really dependable. And let's be honest. It, we always said that going into games and then he was never really exposed that much. But I think there's a big drop in quality between Starfield and, and, and Scales. Mm. And Rangers haven't really gotten about him. He was he was very good um, in the previous Old Farm game, Scales, when he played. And, and yeah, I think that's partially because, as Colin says, you need to get in and rattle them. So who's the man to do that? And it comes back to that conversation we had at the start about Dessers and whether or not you have belief in him as the guy who can go and take the game from the front to Celtic. Mm. Maybe he can be Derek and, you know, perhaps I'll be proved wrong, but I just feel based on the games that I've seen Dessers uh, so far this season, uh, I, I struggle to believe that he's the man to sort of, um, he's the man to, to go and lead the line in an old firm game. But, you know, it's, it's absolutely possible that he'll he'll make a mug of me and he'll come on and score a score a double and then you know as he'll never look back in his Rangers career because 
as we've said many, many times, your Rangers career is always defined by your old firm moments. Yeah. And that, that will never change. And Cyril Dessers at the moment is defined by that miss. Um, that that excellent move, you've got to give him credit. He did brilliantly to get himself the chance. He did brilliantly right up to the last moment. And if he can come up with, with big moments in this game, then it just redefines everything about his, his Rangers career. And he makes a mockery of any criticism that's been aimed towards him before. And that, listen, that applies to every Rangers player. Mm. These are the games by which you're defined. So yeah. it's up to them to seize their chance at making history. Listen, Bert Cornham and Derek, you've interviewed them. Class big guy. In, in, in many ways, um, a limited player. In many ways, a signing that didn't work for Dick Advocat. But do we discuss that? Do we remember <laughs> that? Or do we say, big Bert and that... Thunderbolt. Yeah. That's what we talk about. And and that's the perfect example of how time, you know, zeroes in on those big moments at, at the old firm. And you know, I've seen it and see it in comments there, people saying Bert is a legend. Let me tell you, C CGM fifty five is someone old enough to be around at the time. That is not what Rangers fans were saying before that moment. Let me tell you. <laughs> um so but that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. You can grab hold of the legend, you can grab hold of the narrative. And twist it and twist it to to make it whatever you need it to be, and that's what Cyril Dessers needs to do if he's got the chance against Celtic. Yeah. And that chance will be forgotten. Yeah, if your rifles were in for about forty yards, then uh, he's uh, a bona fide Rangers legend from then on. Uh, Denzel just echoes that point. Uh, just on the uh, <coughs> previously, last thing we should be doing is going to this game feeling second best. This Celtic side has huge defensive issues. Some of those on uh, return from injury can't possibly fit. Get into them is what he says. And this ties in with a comment you made earlier on, uh, Johnny. As well, we'll wrap up with this. Uh, headkeeper says the fact we're discussing the chance of a treble shows how far ahead in the curve. Clement has taken us. Uh, he spoke about it uh, after the game on Saturday about uh, he instilled that winning mentality early on uh, in his tenure and it's not something he has to um, sort of relay onto the players now. He's confident that they have that uh, belief uh, and within the camp that they can go on and end the season uh, successfully well, which shows you how remarkable a job he has done. I mean, the squad was broken. We all were speaking about uh, the rebuild after the rebuild, um, but the work he has done has been quite simply sensational. That Rangers, with the opportunity, uh, of course, Sunday will go a long way in determining that of uh, going on and winning a domestic treble. Quite astounding stuff. Derek, if, if, if Philip Clement wins a domestic treble, it will be the most impressive treble by a Rangers manager in the history of my lifetime. Yeah. Uh, full stop, because yeah. everyone thought when Michael Beale left, that the season was over. It was done. It was a, just a procession for Celtic at that point. And maybe the best you could hope for would be new manager coming in, picking up a couple of victories against Celtic, maybe picking up the cup and showing that there were some uh, shoots of recovery, some potential opportunity for the years ahead. And the way he's turned around the squad in such a short time it's actually remarkable. It's and, and 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 to win the three trophies, it's just unimaginable, really, given yeah. where Rangers were. And if we'd uh, had that question thrown at us just after Michael Beale had been sacked, we'd have said it was ridiculous. We'd have laughed it off. Everyone in the comments would have been saying these players are hopeless, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. So it goes. Down, it comes down to this, Derek. You know, just hire a good manager. You know, everyone says, oh, we need to get someone with Scottish football experience. Oh, we need to get someone who's who can who's proven to do uh, things in Europe, blah, 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 blah. The truth is, hire a good manager, you know. And if you do that, they have the ability to turn it around. They always do. You look at the situation that uh, Ange Postacoglu inherited from Neil Lennon. Celtic were a disaster. Rangers were incredibly strong. A side that would go into the Europa League final. That's how good Rangers were. And we saw what happened there. That was just a good manager coming in. Yeah. You see Philip Clement, just a good manager. Doesn't necessarily have to know Scottish football. Just knows people, understands man management, understands the game, understands what's needed, grasps the idiosyncrasies of Rangers quickly. And what we see, what we've seen here potentially is history, Derek. History in the making. Because 
Philip Clamon, regardless of what happens from this moment on, if he wins the treble, will always be you know a Rangers legend. Yeah, uh, it's as simple as that. It's instant. It's instantly a legend um, yeah. because of what he's what he would have achieved. But there's still a good bit to go yet. You know, yeah. he's he's done a really really good job. Oh, yeah. Um, but you have to go out and win the beeping thing, as Jimmy Bell said. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, folks, we'll wrap up there. Huge thanks to everyone for interacting with the show as ever. A huge thanks to Johnny as well. Plenty on the website uh, to keep you entertained. Remember, we've still got those two fantastic offers on just now. £4 for four months or £18 for an entire year. Uh, and just a heads up, we've got a brilliant two-part interview with Dave King coming this week as well. So uh, now is the time to sign up. Head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. Big thanks to Johnny. Uh, we'll need to get him back on uh, more frequently, uh, I think, always a pleasure to have him on uh, and we'll speak to you again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.